Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about something that affects every farmer out there. It's the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Now, if you're a non-farmer, you're probably saying, um, carbon to nitrogen ratio, what are you even talking about here? Well, it has to do with the residue, the plant residue that's left in the field from last year's crop and what's going to affect this year's crop and especially the nitrogen that that crop needs. Well, there's really two things that we're talking about here. Number one is crop rotation. If you're coming off of a soybean crop, for example, and going into corn, it's a whole different situation than if you're in a continuous corn operation. And I think if you've ever done continuous corn, you really understand what I'm talking about there. The other side of it is the tillage and how much residue is up on top of the ground. So if it's soybean residue versus corn residue, that does make a big difference. But when you've got just tons of corn stalk residue or wheat straw residue, on top of the soil and you're gonna go no-till, this carbon to nitrogen ratio really becomes important. So here's what it really comes down to. If the carbon to nitrogen ratio is too high, and the number is a little debatable, Darren and I were talking about that right before the show, we believe the number is somewhere around 16 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. If the ratio is higher than that, so let's say it's 40 to one, 80 to one, something like that, if a farmer goes out and sprays more nitrogen on, thinking, well, that's going to be available for my corn crop or for my wheat crop. Nope, not going to happen. What ends up happening is some of that nitrogen gets tied up in the residue until that ratio gets down below 16 to 1. So if we had a ratio of, let's say, 10 to 1 carbon to nitrogen, pretty much any nitrogen a farmer would apply would be available for the crop. So that's really what it amounts to, this carbon to nitrogen ratio. When we've got high carbon residue, that's a problem because it, in effect, ties up some of the nitrogen that we apply. What we've really got going on is we've got soil microbes, soil bacteria that are gonna break down these stalks or this residue from last year's crop and break it down back into the nutrients that it's comprised of. This is a good thing. I mean, this is how nature works. We break down, you know, the dead grass in your lawn or the corn stalks from last year's crop. We turn them back into nutrients. We release those nutrients for the next crop that's gonna be raised in that soil. So when we think about this, these bacteria, they need some protein out there. They need the nitrogen portion plus what they're going to get out of the corn stalks to make the proteins that they need. So when they need to break down high carbon residue, they've got to have nitrogen to be able to do it. A good example would be your lawn. If you go out and put a good shot of nitrogen fertilizer on your lawn, your lawn's going to green up pretty quick. It's going to look dark green. It's going to look better than the neighbors. But have you ever noticed that sometimes when you put on fertilizer, it gives you a quick response. Other times you say, man, doesn't really look like I did much out there. And then a few weeks later, then it really kicks in. One of the big differences is if you're saving your lawn clippings. This is very much like farmers that are leaving the residue from their crop out in the field. If you're cutting the clippings, taking them away, bagging them up, hauling them off, now you put nitrogen fertilizer on, well, all those soil microbes, they don't have all this residue to break down, so that nitrogen just becomes available for the current grass that's growing. But if there's all these clippings and everything that's still out there, you have to break that stuff down. So it's the same thing in the farm as in your lawn, as in your garden. We're concerned about this carbon to nitrogen ratio just for our knowledge to know, hey, if we're putting on fertilizer, it's going to take a little while before it comes available if the soil microbes have to use that to break down the previous residue. And the problem for farmers is if it takes too long for it to come available, it doesn't do any good for this year's crop. So that's why for continuous corn farmers, they need to apply more nitrogen each year because it's usually two or three years before they end up getting that nitrogen back into the system. So anytime there's high carbon residue, farmers will apply more nitrogen, but don't get worried. It's not gonna hurt the environment or anything like that. It's gonna get bound up in all that carbon and tell that carbon to nitrogen ratio flips. And it's eventually going to become food for the plant. So it is a good thing. It's just, it takes a little bit of time for it all to work. Well, one other thing that may take a little bit of time on your ground is controlling our weed of the week. We'll explain why coming up later in the show. <music> 